Hi guys, how are you today? Are you ready for new stories? I have five today. Let's go to the first crazy one. Enjoy the stories guys, and don't forget to like and subscribe. And of course, don't forget to leave a comment. My parents were living together but not married when I was born. They were living in my father's childhood home, which he had inherited as his parents died before I was born. They didn't feel that getting married was necessary. My father passed away in a car accident when I was 10 and didn't have a will. And as he wasn't married to my mother, I inherited the house as well as all of his assets, which are used to pay the utilities on our home. My mother met my stepfather a few years after my father died and married him when I was 12. My stepfather and stepbrother have been horrible to me ever since I met them. They treat me like garbage and had my mother convinced I was some kind of crazy criminal freeloader. I was always grounded from some random complaint or another. The day I turned 18, he tried to kick me out of the house, but was of course reminded by my mother that I own the house and that I could live there as long as I wanted. Last month, my mother suffered a stroke and died before she reached the hospital. I'm the one who found her and I was absolutely devastated. I decided to stay at a friend's house because his parents were there for me when my father died, and I felt safer there than with my dirtbag stepfamily. After a few days, I returned to my home to find that the locks had been changed and my key didn't work. My stepfather met me at the door and smugly told me that he owned the house now and I'm not welcome in his home. He claimed he had the deed changed over to his name and that I could pick up my things on Sunday. I was too emotionally broken to fight him and just went back to my friend's house in tears. They promised me they would be able to take me to pick up my things and that they would help me sort out the situation when things had cooled down. We showed up Sunday to find every single thing I own set on tables in our yard for sale and with several strangers sorting through my belongings. My stepfather was selling off my possessions, including many of my father and grandparents' things left to me and demanded that I buy back everything. What happened next is something I will always be grateful for. My friend's mother talked to all the customers and explained the situation, and meanwhile, her husband drove to the nearest bank and withdrew $5,000 of their savings. They are not rich and had been saving the money for a cruise. I will pay that back someday regardless of how much he keeps insisting it is okay. In the end, I got back most of my stuff, save for my gaming PC, which some kid had bought for an insultingly low $50 before I showed up, and my mother's jewelry, which I am certain is in some pawn shop somewhere. My grandfather's car, a beautiful Cadillac which was transferred into my name years ago, was sent to a lot on the other side of town with a for sale sign in the window. Yesterday I had to break into it and use the spare key under the passenger seat to drive it away. I received an angry text this morning telling me that if I don't give it back, the police will be called and I will be arrested. This scared me. My name is on the insurance and registration papers in the glove box, but I don't know if that's enough. Where do I even begin to get this sorted out? My stepfather has the lockbox with all of the important paperwork like the deed to the house, my car title, and all of the documents like my social security card and passport. I doubt the police would let me back into my home without proof I own it, and I don't know if buying my own stuff back means I recognized it was his or something. And can I really be arrested for stealing a car I own if I don't have the paperwork proving I own it? What do I do? You get the police involved and you hire a real estate lawyer. Your stepfather thinks that civil and criminal laws have an except for when it's family, and then whatever BS I want goes rule. That isn't the case. Sue him and charge him with theft. You need a lawyer. Also, you can't just change a deed to your name unless you commit fraud. Go online and check property address owner. He may have been lying to you. You can sue for all your belongings sold, including the car, if that is yours as well. You have a claim to that house. Fight this. What are you doing? Call the police now. There's no way he changed the deed. That just doesn't happen like that. He is betting on the fact that you won't do anything about it because he has been pushing you around for so long. Get a lawyer, go to the police, and do it now before he tries to sell the dang house. A little background. My sister has always been more like my mom, and I have always been more like my dad. I realize I have always been the golden child in my dad's eyes, and it has made my sister jealous. But she never took it out on me, until yesterday. My parents got divorced around four years ago, and up until now, none of our family arguments have gotten this intense. I'll keep it short because it's a really long story. Basically, yesterday my mom was talking to the neighbor, and the topic of my dad's new girlfriend came up. My mom asked me if I had met her, and I said yes, 
to which she responded by straight up asking me, I'm pretty, you're right. Now, the only reason I didn't respond with yes right away is because I was baffled that she would even ask me that. I then refused to respond because I didn't like being put on the spot like that. When I returned to the house of a family friend I'm currently house-sitting for, my sister texted me asking what was wrong with me and demanded to know why I said dad's girlfriend was prettier than mom, which I never even explicitly said. I tried to explain civilly, but firmly, that I was tired of being her and mom's weasel and providing them with information about my father and his girlfriend. I also said I'm tired of being their scapegoat and getting blamed when things go awry. My sister got angry and responded by telling me things like, duck you, and knock yourself out, maybe you'll fall off your high horse. Then my mom came to the house. Yes, she actually invaded my space, again, and demanded to talk to me, called the ducking police on me, and ultimately decided she was going to kick me out of the house, shut off my phone service, and make me move in with my dad. My dad came over last night along with my aunt, his little sister, who's in town, and they brought me dinner and comforted me for a little while. Today I did some things to distract myself from the fact that my life is falling apart at the seams. But as of right now, it's putting me back in the same dark place I was last night. My mom is still keen on kicking me out, and I don't know how long it will take before she realizes, and admits, she was wrong for putting me in this position. I'm not holding my breath because she's a bit of a narcissist and does not like to apologize for anything, even when it is undoubtedly her fault. And this time it certainly is. I just hope it doesn't get much worse from here. Nah, just move in with your dad and screw her. Take this as an opportunity to get out and get your own services. Maybe moving in with your dad is a good thing. Even if she changes her mind, pack up your stuff, move to your dad's, and tell her you're over her petty BS. OP, as you know, none of this situation is your fault. Your mother put you in a bad spot by asking you that no-winner question of hers, and especially if she has been using you to get info on your dad and his girlfriend. You might want to ask your dad if he has a copy of your birth certificate and your social security card, unless you already have those things, as those are documents you will need. Also, your passport if you have one. If you have ID for school, another thing you will want. Not sure of your age. Apologize if I missed it. But if you primarily lived with your mom or split 50-50, your dad will likely want or need to file the court regarding child support changes, as well as possibly visitation changes. I'm sorry that your mom has decided her fragile small ego is more important than you being her child. My brother married my high school aggressor. He knew, tried to convince me that she had changed. She gave me a half-baked apology and in the same breath told me to not ruin this for her. I talked to him, thinking that maybe he wasn't aware to the extent. He got very defensive. That was the day he stopped existing for me. I skipped the wedding, the birth of their first child, the christening, etc. What she did to me was bad. I am talking 10 years later in therapy bad. My father now has a strained relationship with him, and he is very disappointed. He refuses to give him my late grandma's ring. That obviously also made my brother hate me. Anyway, the only moments I have seen him in five years is my grandfather's funeral, my parents' 60th, and when my mother was severely ill. Besides that, nothing. To the conflict. My brother lost his house, so he moved in with my parents him, his wife, and kids. I usually go over four days to help out, clean, cook, and hang out with my mom. Now that he is there, I don't really go over. I pick up my mom to hang out and go fishing with my dad. So now the housework is not getting done because my brother and his wife are apparently lazy. My mom also misses me. I told her I would gladly come over when they were not there. My brother reached out to tell me I was a raging a-hole because I was making everyone miserable for something that happened more than 10 years ago. Am I the a-hole? Not the a-hole. How is it your issue the housework is not getting completed when four grown adults live in a house, and not one of the residents is you? Stop taking blame for everything. You made the right choice to move on with your life. Your brother made his choice to marry your aggressor. He can live with that choice, not your problem. Not the a-hole. She traumatized you. She never sincerely apologized. Instead, she implied another threat. He chose to tie his life to your tormentor. You are well within your rights to avoid her rather than reopening the wound. If you want to try to accept her as a part of your life, you have that option, but you need not do it. If your brother approached you with understanding and an attempt to truly reconcile, that would make him more sympathetic. Instead, he continues to blame you and dismiss the harm she did and that he did by choosing her. 
I think I might be being dramatic, so I'm coming here for judgment. My fiancé, Josh, 28 male, and I, 26 female, have been together for five years, engaged for three. He has a little brother, James, 24 male, who has been with his girlfriend Sally for two years. We have a great relationship with my fiancé's brother and his girlfriend. We've been there for them during their rough patches and overall supportive of their relationship. Even though they live a 10 plus hour drive away, we stay in touch weekly and sometimes daily. We visit them at least once a year and they have still never come to visit us. But they live in a fun beach town, so we never complain about a tropical weekend trip. Sent birthday gifts and Christmas gifts without getting anything in return. But my love language is gift giving, so as long as they were happy with their gifts, I was happy. They were doing great to the point James has a ring and plans to propose soon. A little backstory. A few years back, we went to visit them and stayed in this beautiful hotel and wedding venue. We both fell in love, but at the time, there was no way we could afford it. Back to the main story. As you can tell, we got engaged pretty young, and at the time, we didn't feel ready to get married. Honestly, I'm not big on weddings, but my fiancé wants one, so we agreed on a smaller affair to celebrate. Since we decided to wait a few years, about five months ago we decided to take a shot at the venue we dreamed of, and turns out we can afford it. We can afford it on our own, but both of our loving families are chipping in so we are totally within budget and over the moon. Five years and we are finally getting married. This entire time we have been keeping Sally and James in the loop, since it's their hometown, asking for advice on vendors and just overall excited chatting about it. Monday last week, we locked down a date and just had to pay the $1,000 deposit by tomorrow. I held off to confirm the date was good with my family, since my cousin has a wedding scheduled three weeks after ours. We planned to pay it today after I got the blessing. Yesterday, my fiancé got a phone call from his dad, asking if he spoke to James recently. His dad further explains that James, who has not proposed to his girlfriend yet, decided to book the same venue the weekend before our wedding. To say I'm upset is an understatement. We've been talking to them for months about our progress. They have never once showed interest in this location. Frankly, I could care less that it's at the same place. The weekend before is just a slap in the face. I don't think I can bring myself to forgive them, let alone attend. Am I the a-hole for not wanting to go to brother-in-law's wedding? Edit. Only brother-in-law and future sister-in-law live in the town the venue is located in. It's a five-plus hour drive for the closest family member. Everyone else is ten-plus hours drive or flight away. There would be no way to attend both. Not the a-hole. That's a really crappy thing for them to do. I assume when you've said you've told them everything, you mean the location, the date, etc. If so, they absolutely without a doubt did it to upset the both of you, and done so on purpose. I would be asking brother-in-law and his girlfriend why, and what they were thinking immediately. You and your fiancé should talk to James and try to figure things out before taking things any further. Maybe the father got confused over something James said. Maybe James booked it ahead of time for some other reason. Maybe James just thought, hey, everyone will be in town, might as well get married. If James is planning to get married a week before your wedding, then that is pretty rude. He should have talked to you about it first. He also should have probably talked to his possible future fiancé first. Not the a-hole, but you need to talk to the source, not play a game of telephone. Not the a-hole, who books a venue when they aren't even engaged yet? Either way, go if you want or don't. Just focus on your own wedding day. It doesn't really matter in the end if they're having theirs at the same place. I've always wanted to write books for a living. The older I got, however, the more I realized it couldn't be a full-time job. Not until I got a few books published anyway. So while I majored in English and have always kept writing, I got a full-time job teaching. I love what I do and try to find time to write when I can. My parents are incredibly supportive, but think getting published is easy. They think that I can just write in a Starbucks and become J.K. Rowling overnight. I've explained that success on your first book like that is rare, and there's a reason why people like her make the news. They say I should just try harder, as if it's that easy. I've tried to explain myself and ask them to please back off, but they persist. It can be annoying and digs at my creative process. At brunch last week, they started again, telling me it's been two years since I graduated. Where's my best-selling book? I tried to explain it to them again. I'm working on it, but even when I started the publishing process, it's going to take a while and I'll probably still have to teach. They wouldn't listen. Here's where I might be the a-hole. On Tuesdays, I get done early. I decided to call my mom and say, hey, get my old room ready. 
I quit my job and I'm coming home. She was confused, and I said, well, this way I can focus 100% on writing my best-selling novel. I can't pay rent without my job, though, so I'll have to give up my apartment. Probably my car. She started freaking out, saying she never told me to do that. She was begging me to go get my job back. I let her squirm for an hour and called her back, saying it wasn't real. I asked how it felt to be hit with the reality of what would happen if I only focused on writing right now. She called me a B and said that I had no right to scare her like that. I did apologize, but both of them say it was too far. Am I the a-hole? Not the a-hole. You just served a reality check for what she is trying to demand from you. <laughs> this made me laugh. Not the a-hole whatsoever. The creator of Game of Thrones spent his entire life developing those books. It's seriously just not that easy to just write a brilliant book overnight. Not the a-hole, though in my opinion, it would have been better for you just to tell your mom what it would entail. I'd have to quit my job, move in with you, probably give up the car, etc., rather than claiming you already had. Yeah, they're being serious nags and needed a reality check, but you could probably have accomplished that without freaking your mom out so badly.